I'm Matthew Griffin, and this is a video about radios and television in the 20th century. Radios were the first form of public broadcasting ever invented. The first successful, quote, modern version, unquote, was made in 1900 by a Brazilian inventor, Roberto Londel de Moro. After patenting his idea in Brazil, he soon learned that his invention had real value and sailed to the United States to patent his idea there and make a new beginning. After patenting his idea in the U.S., his invention sparked many ideas, and this led to the first iteration of the AM radio. On a special Christmas Eve in 1906, Reginald Fessenden, a Canadian inventor, would broadcast O Holy Night in Ocean Bluff Brant Rock, Massachusetts, on the amplitude modulation or AM radio wavelength. This would lead to the mass production of radios, as in 1912, the first radio manufacturing factory was made. The first news program that was broadcasted wasn't for a while after the radio's invention, until 1920. This marked the first mass medium in terms of being electronic. In October 1920, the first public entertainment broadcast demonstrated a series of Thursday night concerts up to 100 miles away, the farthest a clearing transmission was able to travel at the time. This marked a historic event in history as we now invented a way to convey messages across long distances through one piece of equipment. A month later in October 1920, the first sports event was broadcasted, marking the initial idea of sport commentating, as sports weren't able to have announcers and commentators before due to the large crowds and spectators cheering. Then the boom of a public medium commenced in 1922 at the Marsoni Research Center in Rittle, England. This advancement in communications created a surge in entertainment. Soon after the use of radios, the invention of the television, or TV, would take over America and spread across the globe. The first modern version of the television was conceived by three different scientists, but one stood out. His name was Philo Farnsworth, and he created the first electronic television demonstration on September 3, 1928. In 1929, he transmitted images of his wife for the first time ever in history. This shocked the nation, as they just heard of the idea of transmitting an image by electricity. This idea was refined for many years, until 1934. But Radio Leicester was the first to open, going on air on November the 8th, 1967. And what a day. We've had the Postmaster General to open the station, the Lord Mayor of Leicester's had a say, and we've got more visitors in the studio this afternoon. During the next... Broadcasting history was being made. For a young journalist filmed in the studio that morning, it was a day to remember. There I was, a nervous young man, uh, at the controls of the radio station that was the first to go on the air. Uh, in the country. Well, I'll flash right round to my next request, which is from Julie Howard of 18 Foss Road, North Leicester. We don't know who was listening, but for a quarter of an hour we read out local news and traffic information and stuff like that. And then we went into the World at One on BBC Radio 4 and immediately heard ourselves coming back again because it was big, major national news. Britain's first experimental local radio station, Radio Leicester, went on the air about a quarter of an hour ago. The first public demonstration of an all electronic television system using a live camera at the Franklin Institute of Philadelphia on August 25th, 1934. This again shocked the people as they now know that live images were able to be broadcasted at long distances. This gave way to a public broadcast service, or PBS. On November 2nd, 1936, a 405 line PBS employing the Imitron, a newly patented version of the television, began at studios in Alexandra Palace and trans transmitted from a specially built mast atop one of the Victorian building towers. This was the world's first regular high-definition television service. The service of live television was in high demand in the U.S., as news and sports were the main reason for the purchase of the first iterations of the television, which later changed to television shows and even later into movies. This created a new version of entertainment for the everyday person. However, it wasn't cheap at the time. The next step for television was to have color. This was proven to be a struggle, as it wasn't effective until 1939, 
one Hungarian engineer, Peter Karl Goldmark, introduced an electromechanical system while at CBS, which contained an, an iconoscope sensor. The CBS field sequential color system was partly mechanical, with a disc made of red, blue, and green filters spinning inside the television camera at 1,200 RPM, and a similar disc spinning in synchronization in front of the cathode ray tube inside the receiver set. The system was first demonstrated to the Federal Communications Commission on August 29, 1940, and shown to the press on September 4. The color TV set wasn't popular until the 1960s, as they announced that half of all TV services would be transmitted on color TVs in 1965. Then, in 1972, all TV services were converted to color and in turn, ending the black and white entertainment era. This boost in the entertainment industry created a reliance for the television, as many important events were being transmitted on televisions, such as the moon landing, the Olympics, the FIFA World Cup, and the president elections. This marked the downfall of other communication devices, such as newspapers. With the invention of the television, the use of the radio was reduced. However, it did not totally fall off. Radios were a key part in aircrafts during the 20th century, as they were the initial navigation system during the 30s. This created a surge of demand for radios, as the military was in demand of working radios. As the rise of radios were in effect, the use of public broadcasting systems were on the rise as well. This created a new way of communication for militaristic planning. This brewed a new form of communication, Morse code. This code was used by militaries to convey, quote, secret messages, end quote, across long distances that were hard to decipher due to few countries who could understand it. This prompted a new era of communication as ideas and opinions were conveyed to a much larger audience. With the integration of these new types of technology, the world started to change at a rapid pace. This rapid expansion of public media grew to be an essential part of the American culture. Thus, this transition from the modern era to the contemporary era was significant due to the technological advancements such as the radio and television. This has been a video by Matthew Griffin. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Alright, see you next time. Peace. America is on.